Okay, so we now want to differentiate for today trigonometry. Of course, later on, we're also going to integrate. Now, it's pretty okay when you're just differentiating. Unfortunately, it starts getting confusing when sometimes you're integrating, then you go to differentiating, and then we mess up. People mess up the minus signs. Okay, so that's why I want you to have one of these handy, your formula sheet. So when you differentiate sine and find it on here, it's on the inside fold, the second half. So on this side is all your differentiating, and then we do integrating, it'll be the, the right side. So you will see about a third of the way down, you'll see this one. Y equals sine f of x equal, when you differentiate it, you want the derivative of your function to come out of sine changed into cos of your function on here, right? Then when we differentiate cos, cos, it, uh, it differentiate to a minus sign comes in here. Minus, derivative of the function, cos changes to sine of f of x. And finally, tan is the really interesting one. When you differentiate tan, it's always the derivative of the function that comes out the front. Tan changes the sec squared. Who would have thought it? What a great thing to do. Right? So they are on here. Whenever you are integrating or differentiating trig, please have this nearby. So you can always make sure you get the minuses around the right way. Okay, so here we go. Question one. Lots of differentiating practice. Differentiate y equals cos of x. So... I've got the thing just here, but you've got your formula sheet. Differentiating cos. The function is whatever is after the cos, so it's x. So the derivative of cos is 1. But the formula has a minus sign. So it's going to be minus 1, or just minus, and cos changes to sine of my function, which was x. Does that make sense? Right, let's do it again. This time I want to differentiate sine. Sine of 4x. So 4x is my function. Here we go, differentiating sine. Derivative of my function is first, which is going to be 4 cos of 4x. y dash equals 4 cos of 4x. Now here's the things to remember. The function itself, yes, cos changed to sine, sine changed to cos and all of that, but if it's x here, it's going to be sine x there. 4x here, 4x there. It's always the derivative that comes out the front, and then you just have to worry about which one goes to the minus. So cos differentiates to a negative sine. All right, another one. 3 tan x. The 3 is a spectator. It's just sitting out the front. So it's just going to stay there, 3. I'm differentiating tan, which becomes sec squared of my function, which was x. And yes, the derivative of x was 1, so there would have been like a little 1 at the front here, times in with that 3. <laughs> All right, question 4. We've got two of them next to each other. You just got to do one at a time. So y dash equals... Look at your sine x, sine of function, differentiates to derivative of my function, which is 1, sine changes to cos of my function. Whereas, now I want to do the cos. When I differentiate cos of x, again, 1 is my derivative, but cos differentiates to negative sine of x. Can you see how this is really handy, hopefully, you have there? All right, another one, question five. Y equals cos of x squared plus pi over four. Okay, so I need the derivative of my function to come out the front and a minus sign because differentiating cos becomes minus. What's the derivative of my function? It is 2x, correct. Cos changes to sine of 
the x squared plus pi over 4. Okay? Again, question 6. Y dash equals the 8 is going to be sitting at the front. All right, looking at 10, I need the derivative of my function, which is 3x squared minus 1. Good. 10 changes to sec squared of the original function x cubed minus x. Getting messier. Does it make sense? Follow the formula. All right, question seven. Y equals 5x sine of x squared. Alarm, alarm. What's the problem? Product rule. Go to the head of class. Good job. All right, so product, the u is going to be the 5x. The v is going to be the sine of x squared. Now, hey, can you tell me the difference? between sine of x squared and sine squared x. What's the difference between those two things? Are they the same? This one means that all of sine x is squared, okay, which is not what I have in this question. The question is just saying that the x is squared and then I'm doing sine of x. It's very important where that squared is placed. So they mean different things. All right. Let's differentiate the u. That's the easy one. That's 5. <coughs> v dash. <coughs> Differentiating sign. Look at your formula sheet. I need the derivative of my function, which is 2x. Sign changes to cos of the x squared. All right. Now we are ready to do v y dash equals v u dash plus u v dash. All right, v times u dash is 5 sine of x squared plus u times v dash, 5 times 2 is 10 x squared cos of x squared. Was that too much to do all at once? Is that okay? Is that all right? I didn't go too fast. Good. All right, we're done. Next one. All right, so question eight, this is what I was just warning you of. Now I've moved the squared. It is cos, the cos x is all squared. If I have to differentiate this, I think it's a better visual if you write that as cos of x all squared because then that makes the, the, the brackets with the powers. Remember that rule? To differentiate brackets with powers, the power comes down the front, you multiply by the derivative of the bracket. What's the derivative of cos x? Oh, look, negative sine x. So negative sine x. Then you keep your bracket <coughs> and subtract one from the power. So with a 2, it becomes a 1. What am I doing? Oh, yes, sorry, tidy up then, yes. But is everyone okay with what I've done? Yeah. Power comes down, multiply by the derivative of the bracket, there's the bracket with 1 subtracted. Then to tidy it, sorry, change 1. Uh, yes, it is. So then that would become minus 2 sine x cos x. or negative sine 2x for the extension people. All right, next on to question nine. Y equals sine squared x cos x. Product rule, x thing times another x thing. So u is going to be the sine squared x. Might be better to write that as sine x all squared so that I can do what I did last time. V is going to be the cos x. All right, u dash, just like we did in question eight. The power comes down the front. I need to multiply by the derivative of the bracket. What's the derivative of sine x? Cos x. Then I multiply by my bracket with one subtracted from the power, which would just make that a power of one. 
So it's just 2 cos x sine x. All right, v dash. What's the derivative of cos x? Negative sine x. Thank you, Grace. Okay, here we go into our product rule. y dash equals v, u dash plus u v dash. All right, v times u dash. Ooh. Do you want me to write this out the long way or can we time those together straight away? What's going to happen when I do 2 cos x sine x times another cos x? That's a cos squared then, isn't it? Because cos times cos makes cos squared. So it would be 2 cos squared x sine x plus, then multiply this way. <laughs> this is sine squared x times another sine x makes sine cubed. There's three of them, but I've got a minus sign, which means I need to change this to a minus sign. So minus sine cubed x. Yeah? We like this? Yeah? Good? All right. Ten. Oh, look. Our old friend, the exponentials, come for a play. All right. Let's put that in there. It's another product rule. So u equals e to the x. V equals sine 2x. U dash equals. Do you remember e to the x is? E to the x. V dash equals. Do you remember sine? What about that 2x? So the derivative of my function is 2 sine changes to cos of 2x. And here we go, product rule. Y dash equals, I'm not going to write it down again. V times U dash, that one times that one, would be e to the x sine of 2x. Plus that one times that one would be 2 e to the x cos of 2x. I've changed the order a bit. I put the two in front of the e to the x, so they look better. I'm going to write them down here. You could factorize out the e to the x. You don't have to. That would be it. All right, question 11. We're nearly there. Y equals cos of 4x over cos of half x. What is that kind of question? Quotient. <laughs> Are you still going to concentrate, please, guys? All right. So we have u is always the top. V is always the bottom. Okay. Let's differentiate them. U dash, looking at cos. We know it has a minus sign when we differentiate it. The derivative of my function is 4 sine of 4x. All right, now differentiating the cos. Oh, they're both causes. Look at that. So it's going to be minus again. Cos, I need the derivative of my function, which is half sine of half x. All right, ready to do our quotient rule, which is v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. Okay, v times u dash, but put them in an order that's nice. So put the minus 4 out the front, then let's do sine 4x cos half x. Now I have a minus in my formula, but when I multiply these ones, I'm going to have another minus here. So it will become a plus, and I'm going to do half, uh, doesn't matter which one's first, cos 4x sine half x <laughs> all over v squared which is cos of half x i could either put it all in brackets squared or put the squared there above the cos um we do not want to leave a fraction in the fraction so what can i do Sorry, bring out the front. Yeah, I could bring the half. I could bring the half out. Okay, yeah, all right. Which maybe that will help you visualize it. So if I bring the half out, it would be, I would need a negative eight in here. 
because half times negative 8 is the minus 4. Sine 4x cos half x. And then that would make just a 1 cos 4x sine half x over the cos squared half x. Now by doing that, by bringing that half out, I can now bring that to where? Down here. Okay, so I have negative 8 sine 4x cos half x plus cos 4x sine half, which is a pain to rewrite it all the time, all over 2 cos squared half x. All because of a fraction in my fraction. All right, last one, number 12. Everyone written that down? Oh, okay, wait a second. Are <laughs> right, we good now? Nope, still no. <laughs> ah. I could have swapped those two times. It'd be nice to have that one second negative. All right, question 12. Find the exact gradient of the normal uh, to the curve y equals sine 3 act, x at the point where x is equal to pi over 18. All right, gradient of a normal means I have to differentiate. So let's go with y dash equals differentiating sine, looking at the sheet. What's the derivative of my function? 3 sine changes to cos of 3x. Now I want my gradient when x is equal to pi over 18, so I'm going to sub that in. y dash equals 3 cos, now it's 3 times pi over 18, but the 3 over 18, that changes to pi over 6. Cos of pi over 6 is one we know. That's 30 degrees. Oh, you got your calculators though. Type it in since you got your calculators. 3 cos of pi over 6, as long as it's in radians, it is the same as cos of 60, which we know from our exact value triangle. But if you've got your exact your calculator, you get. Nobody knows. Yes. Okay, but that is the gradient of the tangent. I want the gradient of the normal. So I'm going to write, therefore, gradient of normal is going to be equal to the negative reciprocal, which would be negative 2 over 3 root 3. Would I leave it like that? No, it's like a on the bottom. So you can type it in your calculators again. Or you get negative 2 root 3 over 9. Fractionalizing the denominator. Yes? And we made it to the end. Quick drink break. Oh, we're scaring the year sevens. <laughs>